Hey folks, Relearning Bench back with you once again. This might kind of be the end of the quarantine videos. Big things are opening up. It's a Sunday afternoon. I'm going to enjoy some chocolate with my tea. Mm. And today it just melts in your mouth. That warm tea does it every time. Today's video is going to be a recap. I've been wanting to use this for some fucking reason. So I'm going to use it as my pointer. I don't know if I should use the wood section, which is all grody, or the 22 section. This is my... <coughs> the tea's harsh. Tea is harsh. This is my 5.7. That I use 5.7 grains of true blue. And finally, because the, the ranges have been closed for 10, 11 weeks, haven't been able to test the velocity. So, velocity on the blue is rated at, I thought I read it somewhere. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Mm, maybe not. Well, I don't know what they're rated at, but I'm going to guesstimate around 1,800 feet per second. And when I look at my recipe book, and I go to my 5.7, and I want to say that, now, back in uh, the March time frame, Oh, I know where I have it. I got it on my phone. Okay. So, I don't know how clear this is going to come. Thus, my handy pointer. Alright. So, when I loaded these at the end of March, and my target uh, load was uh, 5.7 grains of true blue, uh, my actual feet per second were just atrocious. Uh, I did two sets at the range just to just to get a feel for what they were like and i always throw the high and the lows out just like a diver um just to get a better average but uh with my lab radar and i trust the lab radar especially when uh i look at other rounds so i brought nine millimeter as well stuff that i uh reloaded on the hornady excuse me on the dylan xl 750 and those were hella consistent with uh Fiocchi, uh, or those who pronounce it Fiocchi, Fiocchi and uh, Remington slash Federal, they were all in the uh, 1025 range, so uh, as were the reloads, so um, that was good, that was justification for how well the uh, lab radar was doing, but as you can see, my string of only, I did uh, like 10 shots, one of them didn't register, but I'm averaging 612 to 643, a high of 809, and on this one a high of 741, a low of 365, and a low of 491 on that string. So uh, what that tells me is for my particular configuration, meaning uh, how I've got this either trimmed or overall length, uh, my pressure is... Uh, not dangerous. Uh, when I look at my uh, shot, in fact, uh, I probably got a few from yesterday's outing. My mixed bag of a uh, little bit of everything. These little puppies will be way at the bottom. But when I look, I don't see. Uh, I don't know if I have to double check if that's high pressure uh, it can't be uh, based on the velocity so um, what I should do and what I will do uh, in a minute here because it will bump the camera to all hell is I'm going to compare um, my primer strikes 
and I'm I have no idea if you're picking that up uh, on the camera because the camera focus is just atrocious and uh, I've got the garage door open so those are my primer strikes and with the lab radar um, if I can leave these out because I'm gonna grab some more um, with the lab radar my reloads with 5.7 grains of true blue we're averaging, I'm just going to say, in the 625 range, 635 range, which is probably 30% uh, of where they should be. I want to see something in the 15 to 1800 feet per second uh, for what I'm trying to accomplish. So let me pause this video and grab some... Uh, other brass to see what the primer strikes look like. All right, so I'm back, and as predicted, I did smash into the tripod. It's got nothing to do with my teeth. So I grabbed my 5.7 botch and pulled a little random out, and that's what the primer strike looks like. I'll to compare it to one of mine. And I would say a little more dimpling on my. I'm on the right. And uh, and I have no idea what this was shot with. I don't know if this was a rifle, uh, a pistol. Here's another one. That's a really deep strike. So, again, I don't know what these were fired out of. Um, so I don't know what to say. There's one that looks very similar to mine. Almost identical. So, uh, I do know what to say in the fact that uh, a, a newbie mistake, I guess I was so confident in 5.7, um, as in 5.7 grains of true blue based on everything I read, as being the absolute bingo charge that I went ahead and loaded 50, 50 rounds. So I'm going to, these are going to be uh, sacrificed and what I will do is use my uh, Hornady bullet puller and I'll pull these because when I pull the factory, and I'm going to guess the factory crimp is much worse than mine, but uh, you'll see the crimp. So in terms of accuracy, I don't really give a rat's ass about the accuracy with these right now. As much as I'm interested in finding out what the right load is. And 5.7 grains of true blue for me is uh, is not it. That's a very, very soft, light load coming in at less than, uh, I'll say, 700 feet per second. So half to a third of where I want to be. And uh, I do uh, have faith in the lab radar based on uh, what I was pulling with uh, 9 millimeter across three different brands, two brands and reloads, and then uh, 308. So, um, not good. This good, that not good. So, back to the drawing board. Um, I'm probably gonna stair-step it with a little ladder approach. Uh, I'll probably do 5.8, 5.9, 6.0, 6.1, 6.2. And uh, based on what the lab radar is telling me um, with the ladder, uh, I may or may not shoot the 6.1, 6.2, or depending on, again, uh, volatile powder or the pressures with this particular mix with 5.7 and True Blue and, uh, and getting near um, max charge. So 5.7 isn't it. Uh, we'll see if 5.8 uh, through 6.162 do any better, and uh, we'll see. More to come for this one.